know, the role of science in my lighting designs, uh, it's actually paramount. It's a base. It's a strong base. First of all, we, I don't think that uh, lighting design is a science on its own. But I think that uh, sometimes you need science in your lighting design. To give an example, when you're working in museums, there has been uh, scientific uh, research about the impact of lighting on works of art. So, of course, you have to take this into account. All the way through, we've had the economics, we've had the environmental impact, but we've always had this triple, we call it a triple prong, management speak, attack on lighting uh, approach and, and public welfare, well-being, um, creating spaces that are beautiful and families will come to has been you know, what our ultimate aim. And uh, driving, safety, improvement, reduction of accidents, awareness, all of this issue, but, but the, the bigger picture is, is to create an environment. And we are creating boulevards and cycle tracks and cycle lanes and commerce and cafes in, in streetscapes. And these are the communities have somewhere to go and has a sense of identity in each of the various um, areas. So it's, it's the most important thing. And this is the physical human science aspects that we look at just as much as the, you know, the, the technical fixture side of things. So there has been a lot more research that's uh, been going on for the last 20 odd years uh, about the more the physiological aspect, the non-visual aspect of light to people. And that's how sort of human evolved over millions of years, developing the circadian system, the rhythm that actually synchronized with daylight. Now we can actually recreate daylight or actually create the right spectrum that can uh, adjust or manipulate the hormonal um, secretion of the body. We need to be careful because now we are stepping into the medical world that we need to question ourselves, do we really have enough knowledge and the long-term effects of manipulating of this um, hormonal system of people, the circadian rhythm side. And of course in the medical world there, there are scenarios where the medical practitioners do use that, that uh, possibilities to adjust people's body time clock in preparation for operations. But we need to be careful that on a day-to-day -day basis is it the right thing to do? And it's not a gimmick that we just try to do so that to have a bit of fun and color change and so on. So we need to take it seriously. We follow uh, the, the progress of the science, in a, even if uh, sometime uh, is like a, a light in the end of the tunnel. So you know the, the progress in the science, but uh, uh, you have to wait until this progress uh, are, uh, uh, is possible to use, really. So sometime you know about uh, the new discover or a, a new inno very innovation, but you have to work uh, with the uh, old one. I think it's important uh, to stay informed about um, uh, researches that are going on. But in our way of working, uh, it's always very important to uh, do our own analysis. So we're always uh, first an analyzing the situation and trying to find out what are the key objectives. And then we do our design. And if uh, scientific research is important in, in a project, then we'll take that into account. 